When you think of venomous wildlife here in Australia, the first thing that obviously comes to mind is going to be snakes. We are the snake capital of the world. If not that, it might be spiders or maybe even the box jellyfish. But did you know Australia has over a hundred native species of scorpions? And this girl here is one of the biggest, the Flinders Ranger scorpion. So stick around guys, in this episode we're talking about a fascinating Australian arachnid. <laughs> So as the name suggests, the Flinders Ranges scorpion is native to the Flinders Ranges in South Australia. Now the Flinders Ranges is a pretty big area, but these guys aren't found throughout the entire park. These guys have a specific microhabitat. The Flinders Ranges is fairly rocky, fairly arid, and these guys basically live within gullies and gorges and dry creek beds, places with sandy bases and scattered rocks for them to hide amongst. They like keeping a moist microhabitat, so they find a little rock, and they create a scrape underneath that rock and that's where they spend their days. At night time they come out and that's when they look for a feed. Now as far as size goes, like I was saying, these guys are amongst the biggest Australian scorpions. In fact, male Flinders Ranger scorpions get as long as 10 centimeters from the sting to the tip of their mouth parts. So that's about four inches in length. Now females, they're a little bit shorter. Their metazoma, which is what we call their tail, is a little bit shorter, but they've got a lot more body mass. They're bulkier overall. So male or female, they're very big scorpions. And the reason for this sexual dimorphism, this physical difference between the males and females, it's to do with their mating techniques. You see, besides crickets and grasshoppers and cockroaches, scorpions are also cannibals. So these guys will feed on each other. And just like a lot of the spiders around the world, one of the most dangerous times in a male's life is during mating, because she might not want him around. So when the male comes in to mate, these guys grab pincers, and more often than not, this girl's going to try and sting him. But luckily, she's got a shorter tail than him, so he can keep her at arm's length, so the sting doesn't reach him. Now why he's got this long tail, and what their scientific name, Elongatus, means, or refers to, is his, his tail is long enough to keep her at arm's length, and to be able to put a sting into her arm or on her hand. And basically, he gives her just enough venom that it calms her down, and the mating's able to take place. And the way that these guys mate is they'll basically leave a little packet of sperm on the ground, on the soil, and he'll basically slowly drag her over the top of it and it'll be picked up by a, a pouch on her belly. Now, after mating's taken place, these guys part ways as quickly as possible. He doesn't want to end up as a feed for his short-term bride. So he takes his uh, self off into the bush and she's pregnant for about 18 months. So these guys mate at sort of the mid-spring to early summer and they give birth, not the next autumn, but the following autumn. Now when the time comes, 18 months later, she'll give birth to anywhere between 20 and 50 baby scorpions. And those scorpions will spend the first four weeks, the first month of their life, clinging to her back for survival. After that, they have their first sort of metamorphosis but until they basically become tiny versions of mum and dad, and they part ways. And it takes them four to five years to reach adulthood. So these guys not only have a long gestation, they have a very slow growth rate. Now being scorpions, these guys are of course venomous, just like all the scorpions around the world. But Australia actually doesn't have any scorpion species that are considered dangerous to human beings. In fact, out of about 2,500 scorpion species around the world, only about 25 of them are considered capable of killing a human being. And most of those 25 are found in places like India, the Middle East, North Africa, and Central America. So this 25 species of scorpions account for about 2,600 deaths annually out of about 1.6 million reported scorpion stings around the world each year. Now, while our species certainly aren't dangerous compared to those, I still wouldn't recommend anybody else handle them. You see, while we haven't had any cases of anaphylactic shock or allergic reactions, it's certainly still capable that you might be the person who's allergic to a scorpion, and uh, you could end up in a fair bit of trouble. So whether you're in Australia or overseas, good idea to leave these guys alone. Now, even if you aren't allergic, and it's not gonna be a danger to your life, the other reason you don't wanna get stung by a scorpion in Australia is it's just not a pleasant experience. You see, the University of Newcastle did a study on about 100 cases of scorpion stings from around Australia. And in every case, the victim reported immediate localized pain, and in 80% of cases, they experienced severe pain, uh, averaging about six to eight hours in length. So it's not a pleasant experience. There was other side effects as well, such as paresthesia, 
which is basically tingling, pins and needles in the body, uh, nausea, headaches, fatigue, and there was also an increased risk of infection at the bite site. Now, if you are stung by a scorpion in Australia, the current medical advice is to straight away wash the sting site uh, with soap and water, and then apply something like an antiseptic, betadine or something like this to reduce the risk of infection. You can use ice to reduce the swelling. And if you haven't had an up-to-date tetanus injection or if you're still experiencing symptoms many hours later, get in contact with a medical professional. Now, if you do think you're gonna experience any sort of allergic reaction, difficulties breathing, something like this, uh, call an ambulance, call emergency services as soon as possible. But in the vast majority of cases, an ice pack, some rest uh, is going to go a long way to being sufficient to help you recover from a scorpion sting in Australia. Now, as far as this first aid advice goes, I do have to point out this is for Australia. If you're watching this video from anywhere else around the world, this part is not the advice for you. If you're stung by a scorpion anywhere around the world, uh, you want to speak to a healthcare professional in your area or somebody knowledgeable on scorpions there because there is scorpions in other countries capable of killing you. Now, as with all dangers, prevention is better than cure, and prevention for scorpion stings is pretty straightforward. The vast majority of stings happen at night time, and almost exclusively to the hands and feet. So the best things you can do to avoid being stung by a scorpion is if you are walking around at night, simply wear shoes. Even better, if you have to walk in the dark, carry a torch, and that way you can see where you're stepping, and you're not going to step on one of these guys, because while these guys can be dangerous, they are not malicious animals. As you can see with this girl here, they're pretty passive, but if you step on anything, they're going to bite or sting or do whatever they can to get this gigantuan beast off them. So, wear shoes, carry a torch. If you're working in the garden, wear a sturdy pair of gloves if you're picking up rocks or moving bark and mulch and things like this. Between those things, gloves, shoes, torch, we can go a long way to reducing the risks, not only with scorpions, but spider bites, venomous snake bites, pretty much any negative interaction with venomous wildlife that you're going to encounter in backyards and things like this. So the best thing you can do to avoid a scorpion sting anywhere in the world, good shoes, good gloves, and a good dose of common sense. Now, while all this might seem a little bit scary to a lot of people out there, as you can see, these guys are actually quite a passive animal. Like anybody, they just want to be left alone. They want to defend themselves if they have to. But the biggest thing we can do to avoid any confrontations with any wildlife around the world is simply a good case of respect. Now, the best thing we can do to respect this particular species is be mindful of their habitats. While these guys aren't threatened so far, they do have one major threat, and that is human disturbance. You see, as we said, these guys live in the Flinders Ranges, which is a very popular tourist spot. And the specific environments they occupy in the Flinders Ranges are also the places that tourists generally congregate. Creek beds, gullies, sandy flat areas, things like this. And uh, if we are visiting these areas, the best thing that we can do is avoid things like excessive firewood collection, uh, moving rocks or stacking rocks, things like this, because, while she's not threatened yet, the fact that they've got a limited range, a specific environment, and a very slow reproduction. They are an animal that we could place at risk without too much modification. And that would be a real shame. You see, her, like all scorpions, are 435 million years in the evolutionary making. These guys predate dinosaurs by a long time. And uh, they're pretty unique and fascinating animals. And I think they deserve just that little bit of respect that we should be giving every animal on Earth. So with all this in mind, I hope you've learnt something today about the Flinders Ranger scorpion or scorpions in general. I think they're fantastic animals, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, or if you want to help support our channel and help us visit more places, show you more species, check us out on Patreon. It's our Patreon supporters and sponsors who help us keep bringing videos to you guys. But besides all that, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you love scorpions a little bit more than you did before. And uh, between now and next week, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.